Hey guys, Sandra here from Carcraft, Auto Detailing in Melbourne. Today is a look at cleaning and protecting leather and vinyl seats to a professional standard using a simple method but without any expensive products and equipment. So really, anyone can do this at home and achieve these fantastic results in quite a short amount of time. To make filming a little easier and the lighting and shots a little clearer during this cleaning and protecting process, I acquired this leather car seat from a Wreckers that is extremely dirty and filthy, so it should make for a great test subject to display the results that can be achieved. As you can hopefully see, apart from it being quite dirty, this leather seat is also quite worn and damaged. Now, although I'm not making any promises, there may be a follow-up video that looks at actually repairing damaged leather seats, as although this seat can really benefit from a deep thorough clean, the cracked and worn leather will still prevent it from looking its best. The truth is that if I can get this filthy 15 year old Volvo seat clean using this method, I'm really hoping that your own car seats aren't anywhere near as bad, so they should be much easier to clean in comparison. Now you don't necessarily need to use the exact same products I'll be using, as I've used this technique with quite a few different brands of products and it also works quite well. But you will need some sort of all-purpose or interior cleaner for starters. I've actually grown to really love CarPro Inside ever since I first tried it a little over a year ago. It's just got the perfect balance of amazing cleaning ability, yet is extremely safe on just about any interior surface. For more effective cleaning, you can use it straight, but I've found it still works extremely well mixed one to one with water. And for more mild and maintenance cleaning, I tend to use it at a one to three to one to five dilution ratio. You also need some sort of interior cleaning brush. And again, I really like the Swiss Vax one for its gentle yet effective cleaning results and its ability to store and distribute the product as you clean. You'll also need a non-scratch cleaning pad for more stubborn grime and marks, some microfiber cloths and an interior dressing or protectant. 303 Aerospace Protectant is another favourite of mine and a fantastic product to help nourish and protect both leather and vinyl seats. But there are many other great products as well, so you can really just use your favourite interior dressing and protectant. To start with, I'm just going to explain the basic application on one of the cleanest areas of this seat to display how you can approach cleaning seats that aren't as bad as this one. Start by spraying the cleaner onto your brush and load it up with a decent amount of product. Then choose a relatively small section to work on and using small circular motions and just moderate pressure, complete three to four rows of passes in vertical and horizontal overlapping lines. Then using a twice folded microfiber cloth, use straight single swipes to collect the product and lift the dirt and grime, turning your cloth to a clean section with each wipe. It's important to understand that you're trying to pick up the spent APC and lifted dirt, rather than just spreading it around and back onto the seat. So using singular wipes in one direction and slightly rotating the cloth as you wipe, will stop you from spreading the dirt back into the pores of the leather or vinyl seat and prove to be a far quicker and more effective technique. Just as important is understanding what you're actually trying to achieve while you're brushing the seat. Although you can't always clearly see it, leather does have pores that love to collect dirt and grime. The idea about brushing with an APC is that you're trying to lift that trapped dirt away from those pores and encapsulate it within the interior cleaner so that you can then collect it with your microfiber cloth. The other important thing to note is that if you want to avoid issues 
like chemical staining or streaks and uneven finishes, it really is best to apply the all-purpose or interior cleaner to the brush rather than spraying it directly to the leather and vinyl, as this can certainly cause staining and run marks on the finish. And to avoid things like streaking, be sure to work out of direct sunlight and never let the product dry on the surface. Apart from that, just apply and work the leather cleaner evenly in small sections at a time for short periods and your results and finish should both look effective and consistent. Now in certain areas where there is increased and more prominent grime and marks, brushing alone may prove difficult to entirely remove those contaminants. In these cases a non-scratch cleaning pad will prove to be more effective. However it's still important to give the area a brush clean first for two vital reasons. Firstly you need to appreciate that these pads are more aggressive than a soft bristle brush. And combine that with the dirt and grime that's been lifted as you clean, which is actually an abrasive itself, actually makes for a far more aggressive approach. Secondly, apart from removing the dirt and grime in part, the first brushing stage will also dramatically help soften the grime that it doesn't remove. So that follow-up stage with the non-scratch pad will have far more success and require less aggression to clean the surface. So instead of just jumping straight into using the pad, you'll find that it's both safer and more effective to firstly give the vinyl or leather a soft brush clean regardless. Hopefully you can see that even in the more soiled areas, the brushing alone is still able to remove a good 80 to 90% of the grime, and the pad is really only taking care of the last 10 to 20%. Overall, once you get into a rhythm, it really shouldn't take any longer than 20 minutes or so to clean a whole seat to a quality professional standard. I'll also add that from time to time, you will encounter some extremely stubborn marks or stains that do prove to be difficult to remove. My advice is to always try and treat them as soon as possible when they occur, as the longer you leave them, the harder they will be to remove. But sometimes you just need to let them be, as if you're too aggressive, it may lead to even more damage and issues.
Once the seat is completed, be sure to give it a final wipe using a clean, damp and ringed out microfiber cloth. There'll always be a little remaining residue from the interior cleaner you use. And to some level, it will compromise the dressing or protectant that you add to the finish. So be sure to give the seat a final wipe to collect that remaining residue and get the most out of your dressing and protectant. With the seat completely dry, you can now add your favourite leather or interior dressing product. One tip with 303 Aerospace Protectant is to spray it onto your foam or microfiber applicator pad with the nozzle pressed firmly against the pad. Or you may find that its water-like consistency will go everywhere and make a real mess. In the case of older and dried up leather, it's best to be generous with your application and apply a decent amount as the leather will actually absorb it and help nourish the finish. Give it a good 20 minutes or so to soak up the protectant and you can then apply an additional layer or simply use a microfiber cloth to level down and remove any excess product. So all in all, that's basically it. To maintain the finish, all you really need to do is once or twice a month, give the seats a wipe down with a very light concentration of your cleaner or even just a damp cloth. And also top up your leather dressing or protect it from time to time. As always, I do hope this video was able to provide some of you with some useful information. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.